G'day guys, we've got a applications of calculus question for you today. More specifically, we're going to be concentrating on rectilinear motion. Now a student has given me this question, so I thought I'd make a video about it. So let's go. We've got an engineer is remotely monitoring the instruments from a test car traveling in a straight line on a track. At a given instant, she noticed that the acceleration of the car was a constant 4 meters per second to the negative 2. Okay, and five seconds later, she recorded the car was traveling with a velocity of 50 meters per second to the negative one. Calculate the velocity equation of the car over this period and how far the car traveled in that time. Okay, so let's write down what we've got first. So we have a acceleration was a constant four meters per second. So we know that our acceleration in terms of time is just a constant four meters per second. To the negative 2 and 5 seconds later she recorded the car was traveling at a velocity of 50 meters per second to the negative 1 okay so we know that the velocity at time equals 5 is equal to 50 meters per second so let's write our units on this one as well Cool. Calculate the velocity equation of the car over this period and how far the car travelled in that time. Okie dokie. So the reason um, this rectilinear motion question is also an applications of calculus question is because we use calculus to link velocity, displacement and acceleration. So to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the link between acceleration and velocity to try and find the um, starting point of our velocity equation. Okay, so let's start with that. So we know that the velocity in terms of time as a relationship to acceleration is equal to the integral of the acceleration in terms of time function with respect to time. So if we use the um, information that we've been given, we can say that the velocity in terms of time function is going to be equal to the integral of 4 dt, which is equal to 4t, and because it's an indefinite integral, we have to put our constant term on the end, plus c. Cool. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to use our second piece of information that we were given, that the velocity at 5 seconds was equal to 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into here. So I know that my velocity at 5 is equal to 50. So that's going to be equal to 4 times 5 plus c. So 4 times 5 is 20, so therefore c has to be equal to 30. So the first part of our question, the velocity equation of the car over this time period, we can just get that straight away. So we're looking for this piece, the velocity equation of, of the car, and that's going to be equal to V of t is equal to 4t plus 30. Cool. And we also have to work out how far the travel the car has traveled in that time. Cool. So again, we are going to use another piece of calculus which links the displacement and the velocity. So we are going to say that the displacement of our car in terms of time is equal to the integral of the velocity function in terms of time with respect to time. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this with respect to time. And because we're looking for how far the car has traveled in the time, the time that we're looking for, so this piece here, this time 
is going to equal 5. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be to find the distance that we're covering in the first 5 seconds we're going to do the definite integral from 0 to 5 of vt which we worked out before was 4t plus 30 don't forget our dt on the end so if we integrate this this is going to be 2t squared plus 30t and we're going to evaluate that between 0 and 5 and that's going to be equal to well 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50 30 times 5 is 150 and we're going to be subtracting 0 plus 0 so we're going to be subtracting 0 so 150 plus 50 is 200 meters cool so basically what we did in this question is we had to work out the velocity equation of the car which we did and we put it here so we can label it if you like this is the velocity function and what we after we did that we had to use the links that we can make between displacement velocity and acceleration using integrals in this case because we're moving from acceleration to displacement if we were going the opposite direction we would be using the derivatives but because we're going from acceleration to displacement we use a integral and in this case we had to do a double integral to get from acceleration all the way to displacement so we use those integrals to calculate first of all the velocity equation or the velocity function and then we use the integral again to calculate the displacement function and then we evaluated that integral between 0 and 5 to calculate the actual displacement in the first five seconds so I hope that video helped I just wanted to um, quickly run through how all these worked I've got a few more detailed um, rectilinear motion questions but this one was more of a just a solution to this problem in general or this problem specifically sorry uh, if it did help you guys uh, give it a thumbs up um, you know subscribe to my channel if you like it helps me out a lot I put out new videos almost every day on maths and science but until next time guys enjoy your physics <laughs>